Hello students, in this video we'll prove Weyl's equidistribution theorem. So Weyl's theorem states the following. It states that if f given f which maps the torus into c, continuous and we can even set 2 pi periodic if we want, so it's a continuous function. Then, for any gamma irrational in Q, we have that 1 over n, the sum, j goes from 1 to n, f of 2 pi gamma j converges and goes to infinity, converges to 1 over 2 pi, the integral from negative pi to pi, f of x dx. So we have this theorem. This is Weyl's theorem, okay? And Weyl's theorem is very useful in number theory, okay? So what I'm going to do is the following. To prove this, I'm going to define phi n of f to be this sum over here. minus the integral. And so our objective now is to show that this function phi n tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. So I want to show that phi n tends to 0 as n goes to infinity, so let's do that. So I'm going to break this into several phases, okay? So here's the first phase, proof. So note, first part is note that phi n of 1 is equal to 0. That's easy to see because if, if f is a constant, then this is just going to be n over n, which is 1, and then this is going to integrate just to 1, so phi n of 1 is 0, so that's easy to see. Now, part 2 is let um, f of x be e to the i m x, where m is a non-zero integer. m is a non-zero integer. Then let's stop it, so we plug in uh, e to the i m x into phi. So now, phi n of e to the i m x is going to be what? It's going to be 1 over n, the sum, j goes from 1 up to n. Of now I have to plug in what to this? I have an exponential of i m and then what? And then 2 pi j gamma. 2 pi j gamma. Okay? And then of course when we integrate the e to the i m x when m is non zero around the from negative pi to pi, we get zero. We know that previously from previous videos, okay? And so that's all we get for this. Now this, of course, is a geometric progression. So of course what we can do is we can sort of estimate how large this thing can be. So this is going to be 1 over n. And then the first term is unimodular, so I can write this as just 1 minus the exponential 2 pi i. Now ordinarily I go up to n plus 1, but I can pull out the first term and write this as n, n gamma, n m gamma, over. 1 minus the exponential of, um, let's see over here, i and then m and then 2 pi and then a gamma, like so. And now, of course, the top is bounded by 2, so this is less than or equal to 2 over n times this expression, 1 minus the exponential of 2 pi i m gamma. And now the whole point is that since gamma is an irrational number, this e to the 2 pi i m gamma can never be equal to a multiple of 2 pi, an integer multiple of 2 pi. So this denominator over here is bounded, which shows me as n goes to infinity, these terms go to 0 as n tends to infinity, and that's where I'm really using the fact that this gamma is irrational in this calculation over here. Excellent. All right, what's the next thing to observe? The next thing to observe, that's part 2. And so now part 3 is that if p of x is the sum l less than or equal to some number m of a l e to the i l x like this, then these are just trigonometric polynomials of degree n, trigonometric polynomials of degree m. Well, I know by part two that, what can I do? I know that up to the, I know that when I look at the zero mode of this, the zero mode of this is going to output zero for phi n. So in other words, when we look at phi n of p, we 
what's going to happen? Well, when L is equal to zero, that's going to correspond to, the, the, by the linearity of this thing over here, we're going to get zero for the zero term, phi n of a zero, which is going to be zero, plus phi n of what? Of the sum over L less than or equal to m L not equal to zero of A L e to the I L x, right? And now this is going to be zero, and then plus the sum L less than or equal to m L not equal to zero of A L phi n of e to the I L x. And now by part two, I know that each of these terms goes to zeros, n tends to infinity, and there's only a finite number of them. So this tends to zero by part two as n goes to infinity. Great. All right, and so now what's the next thing to observe? So that's the, so now I know this is true for any, just in other words, phi n, this statement over here is true for any trigonometric polynomial. Now I know the trigonometric polynomials are dense in the unit circle, for a, a dense in the set of continuous functions, okay? So good, so now that's part four of this problem, so part four says what? So if, so pick a polynomial P such that P is a trigonometric polynomial, and f minus p in L infinity is less than epsilon, okay? And so now what can we say about the difference of the function? Now what can we say about the difference of phi? If this is so, then what, how can we estimate phi? So then phi n of f minus g, uh, just p rather, for this polynomial, be less than what? p. Well, we have two things over here. We have the sum of f minus p on these points over here. So this is going to be 1 over n. Let's put absolute error on everything. Less than or equal to the sum of f of 2 pi i j gamma minus p of 2 pi i. Uh, just two, uh, just, there's no i, actually. Just j gamma. So we have to get rid of the i. j gamma. j gamma. And then minus 1 over 2 pi, the integral from negative pi to pi, of f of x minus p of x dx. Now, by the fact that the L and the norm is less than epsilon over here, these terms over here, my sum, j goes from 1 to n, are all less than epsilon. And these terms over here are all less than epsilon, so this is less than twice epsilon. Okay? Great. And so now we're done over here, because I know that fn minus p is close, was with an epsilon of each other, so now for our arbitrary, here's the final step, step five in our process, right? So what can I say about phi n of f? So phi n of f, absolute value, is less than or equal to phi n of this p, plus phi n of f minus p, okay? And now what do we know about these things over here? Well, I know that these things over here, I can absolutely value around everything. Okay. These things over here are less than epsilon. And these things over here, these phi n of p, are going to tend to zeros n tends to infinity. So in other words, what we can say over here is if we put the limb soup over here, so the limb soup, the limb soup as n goes to infinity of this is less than the limb soup of this over here, this quantity over here limb soup, n goes to infinity, and that limb soup is less than 2 epsilon. So if you show the limb soup of the fn is, ten to, is less than 2 epsilon, so that shows that phi n of f, so phi n, hence phi n of f, converges to 0 as n tends to infinity. Thank you very much.